Everybody that's struggling is going through a belief system. They are manifesting that struggle unconsciously. They're not doing it with intent. That's why I can't say that they're, they're doing something that is shooting themselves in the foot because they're not doing it with conscious intent. It's coming from their unconscious program. You can't talk negative and expect to live a positive life. You can't talk defeat and expect to have victory. You can't talk lack, not enough, can't afford it, never get ahead and expect to have abundance. If you have a poor mouth, you're going to have a poor life. If you don't like what you're seeing, start sowing some different seeds. You have to really face the ruthless reality, the ruthless truth that what you're getting in your life is a direct result of your beliefs. Your beliefs are controlling your thoughts. Your thoughts are controlling your actions. Your actions are controlling what the experience you're getting out in the real world. So back it all the way to the beliefs again. We got to find out what are the beliefs creating the reality you have. Change those beliefs. You're going to have different thoughts. You're going to have different actions. You're going to have different results. It's going to be this domino effect. It's got to start not with the actions out here. It is one way to begin it, but I find it easier, more efe uh, efficient and effective to come all the way back. Start there. Power begins from within. If you're aware of who you are, if you're aware of what you're good at, what you're not good at, if you're able to see how emotions kind of govern your life, if you can learn what your weaknesses are and how to control them, you can't ever get complete control, but awareness is almost enough. Slowly through this process of knowing who you are and understanding other people and how they operate so you don't make stupid mistakes in life, you can increase that little tiny margin more and more and more and you will be a person of power. See, the way in which we operate, ladies and gentlemen, it's a manifestation of what we believe, what's possible for us. Whatever you've done up to this point, all that it really is, is a duplication, it's a reproduction of what you believe subconsciously that you deserve and what's possible for your life. Most people operate out of their personal history, out of their memory, things they've done, things they've experienced, things they've seen, things that they have observed. What I'm suggesting that you operate out of a larger vision of yourself. I want you to see yourself doing what you want to do, experiencing what you want to experience, having what you want to have, doing what it is that gives your life some meaning and value. Operate out of your imagination, not your memory. Because whenever you look at where you want to go, I'm wanting to warn you, you will have some conversation back here after you go through the data that you've experienced in life saying you can't do it. And so what you want to begin to do is ignore that inner conversation. Start putting the right things in. Now we live in a time in society where there's so much great information, whether it's a podcast, whether it's inspirational interviews, whether it's you know, books or the lives of some of the people we looked at earlier. Every single day or at least every single week, if you want to take your compass needle and start remagnetizing it in a positive direction by exposing yourself to the kind of information that supports your potential and your greatness and where you want to go. Now, there's no excuse for not being able to do that now in a society where it's so available. But if you're not choosing to do that, by default, you're going to be hooked into somebody else's agenda. If you don't start filming as the star of the movie in your life, by default, you're going to end up as a film extra in somebody else's. Remember this, you're the lead character in the story of your life. And the person who controls that script is you and your God. And at any point, you can decide to step into a new chapter. You can step in to be a whole new leading character. All you can be responsible for is yourself. Your starting position is, right? You have to evolve with the different situations that are presented to you. And my experience is, if you do that, the rest will happen. The people around you will be raised naturally. Understand mm -hmm. that? Like if you bring anger into a situation, imagine a household where everyone's always fighting. If all of a sudden somebody's not, and somebody's bringing understanding and love, that's all they have to do. It will change things, right? But you, you can't sit there and say, I won't change it until everybody else does. You know, I'm going to protect myself. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. That's the nothing, chicken nothing and the egg. Change. Right. So that you're asking you, like, there's no surprise. You're asking such big things, right? It's like, can it be better? Of course it can be better, but it requires that everybody work on themselves. When you saw this depressed thoughts coming in or these self-sabotage thoughts coming in, how, what did you shift it with 
affirmations, with different thoughts? What did you start to say? It was just the awareness, A, that, you know, as I said, the very first stop light where I started all of a sudden to listen while I'm waiting for the light. It was like the first time I tuned in and go, what the hell are you thinking? That was the most important thing because then the habit of not going there anymore, starting to realize, uh oh, this is why am I thinking this negative thing? Turn around, make a positive statement right now because that negative one is taking you on the, and just a repetition of this behavior become habitual. So, and habits are great. Why? No effort. I love habits. Why? You don't even have to think about them. They do it automatically, you know? So if you put in these really great habits, you can walk through the day and think anything you want, do anything you want. And your habit, if they're good ones, will just guide you perfectly through here without even being involved with thinking. Um, That's the game. The game is what is heaven to you? Then program that that's your life. And then guess what? The 95% of the day manifesting heaven where you're not even thinking about it. And the way that you countermand the fear of failure, whenever you think of something that is fearful, you say the words, which override these words, the words are, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Tell your kids, you can do it. Tell your spouse, you can do it. Tell your friends, you can do it. Tell people who are looking at a new challenge, you can do it. Start a business, you can do it. Call on a big customer, you can do it. Just tell people you can do it because every single time you reinforce somebody else, you reinforce your own courage. What is the word encourage? It is to instill courage into. When you encourage other people, you actually encourage yourself. And remember, fear is the big enemy. Our job is to get rid of this fear of failure, this fear of failure that holds us back and paralyzes us. Imagine if you weren't afraid of anything in the whole world, what a difference it would make. Imagine if you were guaranteed a success in anything. Somebody waved a magic wand and said, whatever you do from now on, you'll be successful. And you went out here and you could do anything, call on anybody, go anywhere, start anything, try anything, and you'd be successful. We don't realize how much of a role fear plays in our life until we think what we would do if we didn't have any. The brain is made up of two types of cells, neurons and glia, and it's pretty much complete at the eighth month of pregnancy, with twice as many neurons as the adult version. As we age, neurons that aren't used don't fit the required job or are simply too weak will be pruned away in a process known as neural Darwinism. Therefore, the assumption is that as we age, our capacity to learn and retain information diminishes. But it's not true. If you don't use your brain, then of course you will lose it, but that has nothing to do with age. In truth, the brain is much more pliable than we first thought. It is able to change as our environment and experiences change. We can learn, and more importantly, Unlearn, whenever you carry out certain behavior or think a thought, a neural pathway is created. If that behavior or thought is repeated often enough, the pathway becomes more fixed and turns into a neural superhighway. When those superhighways are positive, it's great. If not, they can be very destructive, but they can be dismantled. Your brain has amazing plasticity. Did you know, for example, that the brain can retrain idle networks to carry out new tasks? People who have suffered brain damage have been able to retrain other parts of their brain to do what the damaged part used to do. And this basic plasticity remains, regardless of age. Your brain can renew itself, learn and rewire, and you don't need to sit in a classroom to do so. It is possible through new thought, new actions, and new emotions. Researchers divided a test group into four. The first group were asked to physically practice a one-handed five-finger exercise on the piano. Group two were to play the piano randomly, and group three were asked to watch group one, memorize the exercise, and mentally rehearse it only while group four did nothing. Each group was to do their thing for two hours a day for five days. Two things were fascinating about this study. First, the speed at which the brain altered, new pathways were created, after just 10 hours of practice over five days. Perhaps what is even more amazing is that group three, who did not actually play the piano, but pretended to do so in their minds, had almost as much brain activity in the exact same area of the brain as group one. You share in that all power, all wisdom of mind, but you've got to take it. The power is there, but you must use it. 